Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Tales from the Field. Hey, Andreas, how are you doing? Naraj, I'm doing great. How you been? I'm been good. Uh, so what are you talking today? Uh, we got a great show for you today. Today we're going to talk about responsible AI. Oh, nice. All right, let's head to the show. Let's do it. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Welcome, 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 welcome to Trails on a Free Field. If it's your first time coming to this show, please like and subscribe to the button at the bottom of the screen. We do every Tuesdays data community shows uh, where we discuss uh, live at 1 p.m. Uh, blogs and videos that are shared by you uh, to the data community. On Mondays and Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, we do uh, tech, MS Tech Bit, uh, which shows different technologies in there. So if it's your first time, please go and uh, like and subscribe to our show and welcome to the show. Let's head to the MS Tech Bit. Hey everybody, so let me tell you what we're gonna discuss. We're gonna talk a little bit about what Responsible AI is, the tool that we have at hand to help us with implementing Responsible AI, which is the Responsible AI dashboard. And of course, we're gonna direct you some good documentation. We're also going to step through a great sample demo from the Azure ML examples GitHub repo. Within that sample, we're going to step through, of course, the most common steps for creating a model, which are connecting to and getting handled to your Azure ML workspace. We're going to grab some data, put it in a format that Azure ML likes, for example, an ML table. We're going to create some compute. Then we're going to configure and run a training pipeline with components and register your model. Once we have all that going, we're going to and register your mod, create the model register. We're going to create the responsible AI dashboard through code and components. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how you can create the dashboard for Vision AI. Okay, so let's get into this. First, let's take a look at some documentation. Now, don't worry, we're going to post all the links down at the bottom. Now, in this first article, what we're going to talk about is basically what is responsible AI. And what Microsoft wants you to know is that it's a framework, it's a standard that they developed that encompasses six principles, fairness, reliability, privacy, inclusiveness, transparency, and accountability. And this article, what they're telling us is all those, we're talking about all those principles and why they're important. This next article that I want you to know about is, the, is about the dashboard. And they start introducing us the concept of the dashboard, what it's made up of, the components that make it up, how you create it, how you can configure it, customize it, how you can start debugging your model. What other goodies are in this article? They talk to us about uh, the reasons to use it, ways to customize it, I just mentioned that, the people who should be using it, and supported scenarios and limitations. Watch out for those limitations. I also want you to take a look at the AI Lab Projects website. Now there's some good lab projects in here, but the one I want you to concentrate on today is the Responsible AI dashboard. And if you go in and click on it, you can try out the demo and kick the tires and, and rev it up. You, they'll talk to you about why you need this, the idea, the solution. But basically what will come up when you try the demo is a mock Responsible AI dashboard and it will take you through all the components and error analysis and all the goodies that are inside of it. Also, we want you to take a look at this website. And, and this document, because they introduce a little bit more detail about the Responsible AI components. Now, what I want you to take home from this document is that you're going to need two components for sure, the Responsible AI Dashboard Constructor and the Responsible AI Insight Dashboard. And then you can combine those with the tool components. There are some limitations, also watch out for that. But we will come back to this document because when we create our dashboard through code, using comp those component, those individual components, you're going to see that you'll get something exactly what you see here on the screen. We can also create a Responsible AI dashboard for our Vision AI uh, models. And this is in preview. However, this is really cool that we sh we're going to be able to do this for our Vision models. Now, if you head over to Azure ML Examples, that GitHub repo, what I want you to download, what we're going to concentrate on is two Python notebook examples. What we're going to look at, and the, the link is up there, it's coming up right there at the top. We're going to work with the housing classification model notebook and the vision image classification fridge notebook. Download those, I already downloaded those, and I uploaded those to my machine learning studio. 
and we're going to start running through them through the housing classification model notebook. Now, if we switch over, you'll notice on the left-hand side I already imported those and added them to my uh, environment. And on the right-hand side, I already opened up the, classific the housing classification model notebook. And the first thing that we're going to do here, let's just get into this, is we're going to you know, populate some variables, create some variables, so my compute name, so the versions for my RAI housing components. After we're done creating those variables, we're going to have to get a handle to the workspace. I'll go ahead and do that. We're also going to need a handle to the Azure ML registry for the RAI built-in components. You just saw that document that displayed all those components on the screen. What we have access to is we have access through this registry to those components. We're going to use those components. Now, back to some basic steps, some general steps. We're going to need some data. We're going to use two pots. We're going to create two pots of data. One, a training pot and a test pot full of data. We're going to go get that data and we're going to populate though that data. We're going to create some data assets, register those data assets. Right now in this cell, what you're seeing is that I'm actually get, uh, taking a look at what's inside the data, some tabular information about housing costs. That's great. Now, if we go over the data assets section, you'll notice that if I, I, already, pre, I already did this step prior to uh, you know, walking through this demo, but I wanted you to know that one of the steps, the following steps actually going to register those data assets, you're gonna need two of them. Like I said, one for training the data and one for testing the data. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this cell once again. Sorry, in pre-run. And you'll notice that when you work with this notebook, it's actually really, really uh, straightforward and nice and, and it's, 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 it's pretty user friendly. Now we're getting to the point where we're going to start creating a model training pipeline. What I want you to know is that model training pipeline is going to be composed of two items. One, the actual training component and another, which is the model registration component. And on the left hand side, you're going to see that there's going to be some folders that are created when I run these next steps, these next cells. Now, this next cell, what it's going to do is going to pop, create a, tr a registration, I mean, a, a training model script in Python and also a registration Python script. It's going to create a folder on your left hand side that you'll see right there. Okay. And it's going to take those bits of code, those scripts, and it's going to inject them inside of a component. But before I inject them and create the components, I need to tell Azure ML Studio, hey, I'm about to build these components. And the way I do that, the way we can do that is through a YAML file that describes what components are going to go inside of a pipeline to Azure ML Studio. And that's what we're doing here in these cells. Excellent. We're going to need some compute to train our model. Okay. And now we're getting to the point where we're going to run and train that pipeline. We're going to just start to describe the job, define the pipeline, what's going to go inside that pipeline. Okay, we're going to tell Azure ML, this is what's going to go in that pipeline. We're going to have a training pipeline, a testing pipeline, beautiful. The components that are going to go in that pipeline, we're going to create finally the definition. And we're going to submit the job to Azure ML. And after a little bit of time, it'll complete. I already did this step where I created the, the pipeline beforehand. And if I refresh, you'll notice that I have my pipeline, the one I just, just submitted to Azure ML. It's, it's, it's off and running. But I already did this step beforehand prior. And if we click in there, you'll notice this is the end product. This is the last of the pipeline that's in there. And that pipeline is going to have, like you just saw, a training component and a registra registration component. Okay, this probably took, it took two minutes and 38 seconds. Beautiful, we'll fast forward it so you guys didn't have to wait for those two minutes and 38 seconds. And if we go back, you'll notice, if we go back into our model section, you'll notice that a model was created. Now we're, we're finally to the part why you're here, why you're sitting down is to find out, okay, how do I add some of those dashboard, RAI dashboard goodies into the mix? 
And for that, we're going to need to add some components. Now, remember back in the documentation, this is the documentation. We started describing what those components are and the two, you know, necessary components, the constructor and the uh, insights, uh, REI insights con uh, component. What we're doing here is we're just telling it, hey, Azure ML, this is what I, I want inside of that dashboard, these types of components. Okay, we're going to run that script. Uh, that cell it took about two sec two seconds. Great. And if we go back to the a pipeline, this is the final product. We haven't run. We I previously ran this, but I want you to see what the end product is going to look like. You're going to get a pipeline that has all of these components in there: the constructor, the error analysis component, the insights component, the insights dashboard component, which you need, and the scorecard component. Great. And that's if, and once we get this pipeline started, you know, configured, we're going to go ahead and submit it. So it took about five minutes to create that pipeline. And we're also going to add a scorecard component to it. And that's what we're doing in this cell. And next step is we're going to start to create the object. And that object is what it means is we're going to create that dashboard object and associate it to our model. We're going to create our job. We're defining our job, creating our job, and we're going to submit it to Azure ML. Okay, beautiful. And that's going to take a little bit of time. Hopefully not too long. And if we head over to our models, what I want you to see is a model that I already pre-created and that model has associated with it the dashboard and this is where you know what we're talking about what we want this created the dashboard I want you to take a note of that arrow in order to get the full-fledged functionality of the dashboard you need to have some compute associated and running at or attached to it so make sure you have some compute attached to it in order to get all the functionality but this is the dashboard and all the goodies that are associated with it pretty awesome Okay, next thing I want to talk about is a scorecard. Now, the scorecard is like the baseball card for the model, for the responsible AI model, the dashboard model. And I can download this. It's a PDF, you know, dash, uh, scorecard that I can share. It tells me some good metrics, some good stats about the model, the precision. And I can, you know, pass this along to my colleagues, data scientists, and any developers that may be wanting to know about what's going on with the model and, with, you know, how the responsible AI dashboard is, is seeing it. Last thing I want you guys to see is I just switched over to my ML Studio and we're going to look the same thing for the image classification script. We're going to go through the same steps, but what I want you to know about the image classification responsible AI dashboard is that it only takes one component. Remember, this is still in preview, but it's pretty great that we can add a dashboard, REI dashboard to a vision model. And that's what you're seeing right there in, in front of you. It's only same steps you're gonna take with the Vision AI uh, model is you're gonna get some data, reg train the model, register the model, tell it, hey, these are the type of components that I want in the dashboard. Once I've, I've trained it, registered, I can add the dashboard to it and beautiful, added the dashboard to it and this is what it looks like. That's it, pretty straightforward, love it. Uh, looks extremely user friendly, and I know I'm going to be adding this, you know, to all my models and everything that I work with. Adding the responsibly I dashboard moving forward. It's going to be pretty simple. Hope you liked it. Enjoy, and we'll see you soon on Tales from the Field. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.